Thank you, Julian. And uh, thank you all for coming along today and hearing a couple of very different stories. Um, Tim, I guess that I'm going to have to make this fairly short, given it's a double header. But what I'm going to talk about is very much a new story. What I'm going to talk about today is genuinely only three to four weeks old. Uh, it is still actually being developed as we speak. And I'm going to be talking about what is Australia's closest neighbour. We have a project in, no, I'm not talking about New Zealand, uh, nor Tasmania. I'm actually talking about Papua New Guinea. It is uh, the country closest to Australia. Been in the news quite a bit in the last few weeks. And I'm just going to run through a key change that we've done to this project which makes it quite compelling. Oh, my apologies, the disclaimer, this has been released on our website and on the ASX, so you can read this at your leisure. This is fundamentally a new focus, high grades which, equi which equilibrate to very high margins. I'm sure all of you here are quite familiar with what has happened in the gold sector over the last few months. This has forced all of us to have a very careful and uh, considerate review of how exactly we're all conducting our businesses. Here this was previously considered a large open cut resource and if we go back to last year most of the large investors and most of the large uh, institutions in the world were really seeking larger deposits, more ounces, uh, make it bigger. This project does indeed have scale but through our recent resource assessment, thanks to one of our key shareholders, we're now very much focused on high grades, on wide ore bodies, and this makes it cheaper and easier to mine. It gives you high margins, it gives you a short time to production, and best of all, a fast return on your investment. So fundamentally, we're looking here at wide high grade zones. These are 50 to 175 metres wide. At the moment we have nearly half a million ounces at 10 grams within a 2.1 million ounce gold deposit plus silver and we're looking to rapidly increase that. We're targeting a million ounces at 10, gra at 10 grams within this deposit and we're looking to do that by early mid next year. The way to do it is that we've part partnered with some of the experts in the mining industry. Many people are looking not just for a return on your investment to make certain but also to make certain that you're working with people who can actually deliver. And that's all very well, but as we heard from our last presenter, it all really means naught unless you've got genuine local support that then engenders genuine government support to make things happen. So our outcome looking in 2015, high margin, low cost underground mine. We're targeting 150 to 200,000 ounces a year at around 10 grams based on these assumptions, and that means a fast return on investment. So how are we going to do that? We're just breaking it quickly down. As mentioned, we currently have nearly half a million ounces of 10 grams within our 2.1 million ounce resource. These high grade zones are generally wide. Most of the high grade zones that people look at that are above 10 grams are more 2 to 10 metres. Most of these are above 50 metres and we're expecting that by drilling them on a close spaced basis from underground we can increase both the grade and also extend them down dip. Uh, certainly the mining experts consider that uh, a million ounces is not a, um, a stretch target at 10 grams. Given that, we're also looking at a much smaller capex than we were considering last year with an open cut operation. Capex we're targeting is less than 100 million, uh, but all of these costings are being calculated at the moment, uh, and that's less than half of the capex we were looking at for a large open cut. As mentioned, we've got uh, local support, community support, which is engendered government support, and we're developing a high-grade underground operation. And if we look at what happened next door, this could continue for quite some time. The neighbouring gold mine is now in its 22nd year of operation, and it's a look-alike. Fundamentally, particularly at the moment, people look very carefully at who are your backers, what sort of size company. Uh, we're currently uh, a 70 million market cap. Like most gold companies, after Easter this year, we all suffered between a 50 to 90 percent drop in our market cap on a 10 to 15 percent drop in the gold price. But thankfully we've got and we've been humbled by the, the support and continued support of some of the world's largest institutions and some significant high net worth investors have always stepped up to the plate. 
One of the reasons that I'm able to talk with some confidence about this deposit is that we're sitting in one of the countries that is truly endowed with world-class deposits. As a general rule in Papua New Guinea, they're either large or bigger, and we are literally over the hill from one of the world's top ten gold mines called Porgera. It has a similar geological setting, but this hasn't been the impediment to develop in the past. It's the fact that we have delivered genuine landowner, landowner support through our landowner investigation study, and through that has engendered government support as well. A quick snapshot shows you uh, literally how close we are to Porgera. And the reason, again, that we've got some confidence that the geology is similar, the mineralization is similar. Porgera didn't start as a 28 million ounce deposit, but actually started at less than a million. Uh, it found some high grade zones, not dissimilar to what we had, quickly added 5 million ounces at nearly an ounce, and uh, now it's produced over 17 million ounces, and this is a genuine lookalike. The reason we're able to ha speak with some confidence is that our key geological consultant actually spent more than a decade at Porgera. He was their senior geologist, he was their uh, jork consultant, and uh, while he was there, he focused on high-grade zones. He added more than 9 million ounces to their reserve base. He added substantially more to their resource base. So I think he's well qualified to state that this is indeed a lookalike. But as mentioned, if you're going to work in any country, and I'm including some of the third world countries like New South Wales, you need government support. Genuine government support that's driven from the ground up. Recently we were fortunate to get a full page ad from the Mines Minister where he basically states that this government's intention is to support mining projects like Mount Kari because they make a significant contribution to their uh, economy and uh, oil and gas also makes a significant contribution to the economy. And it was pleasing even to hear the Prime Minister on the floor of Parliament voice his support for this sort of project. Now, why would a government say those sorts of things about a relatively small company like Indochine? And it's fundamentally this. It's because our key strength and our key differentiator on this project and across the corporation is our approach, or what we call the Melanesian approach, to landowner engagement. Instead of just using the law as it stands, we've actually gone beyond that and looked at fundamental customary law, pre-colonial times, how do local people define who are the landowners, get them to tell us, we fund that process, we support it by chapters and tomes of anthropological evidence and then deliver that into the lands department and enshrine it into law. This is one of the key things to ensure not just smooth permitting but long-term sec long security on a project like this. As mentioned when Julian came up to the plate, this project was known as a gold rush 25 years ago. There was more than a million ounces taken out in nuggets. People still consider it a pot of gold. One thing I do know is that if there was that much at surface, there's a whole lot more underneath. It didn't fall from the sky. And so to ensure that we can develop it in an appropriate way, we've spent a lot of time developing this and putting a responsibility back on local clan leaders. And it's fundamentally driven by respect and partnership through a collaborative process. All right, let's now talk quickly about some of the technical issues. First of all, where are we? This is what the hill looks like. Uh, although we're in what is deemed a tropical location, this is like a bad Sydney winter every day here. Five to 15 degrees, uh, rains most days, about 3,000 metres. But uh, you can see here this is taken on our normal clear mornings. Uh, the photo emphasises the two high-grade zones that I'm going to speak at, one near the lower part of the hill. It does daylight, but the highest grades actually start from about 50 metres from surface, and the other one is near the top of the ridge. Now, if you just think about where that WRZ high-grade zone is, we're looking to the southeast. When I go on to this next slide, this is in plan view, so north is up, and that last photo was from the left-hand side of the screen looking at that purple zone the high grade zone at WRZ North and then the green zone is up at the top of the hill in the BZ. These are wide high grade deposits and as mentioned they sit within a deposit of 2.1 million ounces gold, 18 million ounces silver, 
or two and a half million ounces of gold equivalent, and three quarters of that is in the measured and indicated category because we've drilled this on 20 to 30 metre centres. Now looking at this resource model and putting it into 3D, you can see there in purple in the front of view, that's our WRZ high grade zone, and in green up the top of the ridge, the BZ. They're the two high grade zones that we've identified and we've determined are consistent and, uh, and coherent, but there are more high grade zones that we've both encountered and we expect to find more. Just imagine that purple zone, we're now going to look at a long section. There in purple is a long section of that zone. It's a, it's a slice north-south through that one deposit. You can see it's 275 metres long and as mentioned varies between 100 and 175 metres wide. And then if we zoom in a cross section of that, you can see there healthy grades um, and uh, many of these intercepts on a metre by metre basis will vary between 5, 10, 15, 30, 50 grams on a metre by metre basis. I have to say that in my personal experience, originally as a geologist, I've never seen so much gold, neither in a drill hole nor on surface. And we're expecting to, to uh, open these up down dip and also by close space drilling at ounces. The technical support for our thesis is fundamentally this. We did our Jork resource using some of the best in the business uh, in June, July this year. And out of that, unfortunately when you've got high grades they all get smoothed and it was very clear to get the benefit of those high grades we needed to drill more closely. We were quite fortunate that one of our shareholders is actually one of the experts in underground mining and uh, he basically called us up and said, look you can make a lot of money on these things. I'm currently working at Sandfire and uh, this looks to be wider and, and richer than what I'm digging up there. You've got high grams per vertical metre and high grams per, on a grade thickness basis. And in our next presentation, I'll run you through some of those things. So the experts expect that we're going to increase this grade to north of a million ounces, and that's because we've got a similar history to Porgera. It started from developing an underground at it and drilling it at a close spacing, and those grades lifted, and we're expecting to see the same. But before going on, I'm just going to show you a very quick uh, fly through. I hope it works okay. Uh, this will just give a bit of a, bit of a uh, bird's eye view of the project and then we'll go on with the rest of the, the um, presentation. You can see here we're literally kilometres away from the north coast of uh, Queensland. Uh, we're zooming into the highlands of Papua New Guinea. You can see Mount Targan on the right and Tari on the left. Two yellow roads coming right into the project. There's Porgera to the right of screen and Mount Kari to the bottom. This is what Porgera physically looks like and a quick photo of what that mine actually looks like, 1.3 kilometres long, half a kilometre deep, plus an underground operation. The road thankfully comes right up next to our project here, the reservoir. There's a power line coming past in that green line. And then you notice that we're almost like a highland plateau uh, or a highland heath, uh, so it's relatively benign countryside. As we spin around to the end of the, uh, the hill that we've been drilling, you see the Mount Kari deposit. That's our camp. It can currently host about 150 people and has been considered of quite good quality. Now we're looking to the southeast, a little bit like that photo I showed you before. You see there in purple the WRZ North High Grade Zone, the BZ Zone up at the top. Uh, we're, expecting, uh, we're expecting to find more of these. And uh, as mentioned, that's that photo that we were looking at before, just to give you some context. Zooming back from there, we have a number of other projects nearby and uh, as time permits we'll get around to drilling these. Uh, I can tell you they don't occur as orphans. There is a structural corridor that links both uh, this project with Porgera. They're driven by the same aged intrusives, the same style of mineralisation and we're expecting to find a whole lot more. There in red is our exploration licence, 220, 220 square kilometres immediately adjoining the exploration licence around Porgera. Thank you very much. Sorry, Julian, uh, that was, I meant to say on the end of the video. So I'm just quickly going to go through a last of the slides. Yeah, my apologies. One of the things I do want to emphasise, and it's always a bit hard, is that high grade deposits are indeed rare. Uh, on recent research, there's uh, about 440 deposits greater than 
uh, a gram, uh, sorry, greater than a million ounces, but most of these vary between one to two grams. There's less than 20 deposits at the moment that are 10 grams or greater, and most of those high-grade zones are two to 10 metres wide, whereas these ones are greater than 50 metres. How do we add more ounces? As I mentioned, this is by detailed and close-spaced underground drilling. At the moment, we're using helicopter-supported surface drilling, and we're looking at underground drilling being a quarter to a fifth of the cost and about four to five times faster as well. This is why we have the confidence to add those ounces and uh, furthermore, we can open up the deposit itself, access bulk samples and ensure that our processing plant in fact works. This at the moment is the plant plan for where the adit would go. There's still some discussion as to whether or not we run that through the BZ or whether we continue to do that from surface. And as I mentioned, it means that we can open this up and get bulk samples. These are our current skilled partners. Australian Contract Mining, the managing director of this, was one of the five people who headed up Elton. He's worked in many different parts of the globe. And one thing everybody in WA can tell me, he has a very much a can-do attitude. I'd say the same about GR Engineering. They've built plants everywhere. And one of the great parts about them is that when you discuss them, you speak directly with the principals. You're not dealing with some middle management. And they're all focused on ensuring that things work, they get done in time, and they get done under budget. And that's been shown out in the recent Sandfire project. Our focus, as mentioned, is going to be on rapid, low-cost quality ounces by going underground. Look, if I could simplify this versus an open cut, you've got fewer toys, you've got smaller dumps, you paste plants, so you re-inject your tailings. It all actually becomes a whole lot more simple and certainly much more simple from a security perspective. We do have an aggressive timeline, uh, but this is based on where we're up to, both with locals, with community, and the fact that we've got experts inside the tent. And it really does tick all the boxes. Infrastructure is nearby, local community support, and that expertise in Papua New Guinea. And so in summary, we're on track to developing high margin, high grade, low cost project in a quite a short period of time. As mentioned, there are very few deposits around that have a subset of a million ounces over 10 grams and we're expecting this capex to be less than 100 million, so you can imagine the impact on NPV. Also, we're targeting higher ounces than we did in our PFS only last year, 150 to 200,000 ounces, letters of intent with key mining experts and with that local government and local community support. So thank you very much. I think you're gonna hear a lot from us over the next 18 months as this thing gets into production, and thank you again for the opportunity to present.